So we are on buoyancy calculations now. This is part one, calculating an object's buoyancy. What I mean by that is being able to say whether a given object would be either positive, negative, or neutrally buoyant in either fresh or salt water. Well, how will we do that? The type of water, as I just mentioned, is very, very important. It's important to realize that one liter of fresh water weighs one kilogram. One liter of salt water weighs a little bit more because of all that salt. It weighs 1.03 kilograms. So if we were to take an object, let's just imagine it is a cube. If we were to know the object's weight, in this case we have a cube with a weight of 100 kilograms, and we also know its volume or its displacement, they're the same thing, let's say it's 100 liters, what we know is that there is a downward force acting on this cube and there is an upward force acting on this cube. So with a cube with a weight of 100 kilograms, the downward force is 100 kilograms. What is the upward force? Well, that depends what type of water we are in, because the upward force is equal to the weight of the water it displaces. If it displaces 100 litres and it's in fresh water, given that one litre of fresh water weighs one kilogram, 100 times one will tell us the upward force, 100 kilograms. If it's in salt water, we know that one litre of salt water weighs 1.03 kilograms. So 100 times 1.03, 103 kilograms, gives us our upward force. So then thinking more about what effect that has on the object's buoyancy, the difference between its upward force and its downward force will tell us what will happen to it. So this cube in fresh water would be neutrally buoyant. The weight of the water it displaces is equal to the weight of the object. If this object was in salt water, the downward force is still the same, it's 100 kilograms, but the upward force is 103 kilograms. The upward force is greater than the downward force. That would mean this cube would be positively buoyant in salt water. It would float. Well, let's look at how we might be presented with this question in an exam and the easiest, simplest way to lay it out and answer it. There is a one, two, three approach that eventually you will use to find the answer to the question. But what you probably need to do with questions such as this, or at least what I like to do with questions such as this, is start by actually drawing a diagram of what the question is describing. So we have a body of water. Uh, in this case, we're going to look at fresh in the first example. And we have an object in it represented by that square there. We know it has a downward force and we know it has an upward force. For the upward force, next to the up arrow, I like to put a multiplication sign uh, to remind me that there is a little calculation I need to do to calculate the upward force. So, once we've got the basic diagram drawn on a bit of paper, we can fill in the numbers from the question. The first number would be the weight of the object, which is its downward force, and we can enter that under the down arrow. We can then look for the volume of the object, 100 litres in this case, and we can put that in the middle of the object. We then need to think about the type of water we're in. We're in fresh water. One litre of fresh water weighs one kilogram, so I put a one next to that multiplication sign. I can now do that calculation. 100 times one is 100, so the upward force of the object is 100 kilograms. So now, looking at our three-step process, what do we do on step one? Well, we take the upward force of the object that we've just calculated, 100, and enter it in there. We then, for step two, put in a subtract sign because we are calculating the difference between the upward force and the downward force. And then, for step three, we can take the downward force, the weight of the object, and enter that in under step three. So 100 goes in under step three, and we have our calculation. 100 minus 100, a very simple calculation, is zero. So this object is neutrally buoyant. It is just staying in the middle of the water column there. So let's do the same thing for salt water. Let's change that question and make it salt water and look at what we need to change. The first thing we do is fill in the numbers from the question. They haven't changed very much. 
the object still weighs 100 kilograms. It still has a volume of 100 liters, so we don't need to change that at all. What has changed is the type of water we are in. So this one that we've got here needs to be changed to the salt water constant. How many kilograms does one liter of salt water weigh? It weighs 1.03 kilograms. Now we need to change our upward force. 100 multiplied by 1.03 is going to be 103 kilograms. So the big change as we moved it from fresh water to salt water was the upward force of the object. The upward force of the object we put under step one. Subtract goes under step two. We're calculating a difference. And step three, we have the weight of the object, which hasn't changed as it's moved from fresh water to salt water. It's the same object with the same weight. So now we have 103 minus 100. It has three kilograms of positive buoyancy. That object is going to be floating on the surface of a body of salt water. So when you get a question, fill in the numbers, draw a diagram first, fill in the numbers.